Okay, well, as you saw in the opening montage there, I have my uh, Elberg 30 next to my house. Let's open her up. So we have her propped open in the back. The sunlight. Up around the front. It's a little windy today. Let's get the ladder. Here we are, home sweet home. 1975 Alberg 30. Let's see if I can find a seat. Uh, and I hope it can hear me. This is our 1975 Alberg 30. She came with the name Wee Dawn. I did change it officially to Marie after my wife's middle name. And then we were talking and we had some fun with some ideas and we're going to call it the Aquamarie. So this is Project Aquamarie. I have a bunch of notes here. Basically introductions. The older I get, the more I'm needing these. Uh, I'm an environmental engineer, have been for over 30 years now. Live in New York State, Western New York. My wife is a nurse. And together we both love the ocean. We love uh, love being on water. Love being near water. You know, I saw this as a means to an end. I did a lot of research. I looked at. Uh, I wanted to see worthy a blue water boat, something that. Um, yeah, I don't have any grandiose plans at the moment to sail around the world, but if uh, if we did decide to do something like that in the future, it would be nice to have something that can handle it. And the Elberg 30, uh, with some appropriate upgrades and modifications, can handle that, is handling that. There's, there's several out there doing it right now. One of the books I read was 20 Small Sailboats to Take You Anywhere by John Vigor. I had already had it in mind that I wanted something seaworthy, and this book directed me to several possibilities. I knew I wanted a smaller cruising boat because the larger you go, the more expensive it gets. This may seem intuitive, but in the boating world, the larger you go, the expenses begin to increase exponentially. The Elberg 30 is the first boat reviewed in this book, but I admit I'm reading too much into that as they're presented alphabetically. That said, the review is glowing, calling the Elberg 30 a legend in its own time. The book even quotes another publication, the ad-free Practical Sailor magazine, which says, Not many 30-footers, old or new, seem as basically seaworthy and rugged as the Elberg 30. As well as, prospective buyers should feel a warm confidence in her structural soundness. I immediately added the Elberg 30 to my list of potential boats to buy. This girl was floating uh, when we bought her. The motor worked. There was an issue with the transmission plan is to get this boat ready for the water by the time I retire and that's in a little under three years now is when I'm eligible to retire we'll see if the finances line up but that's when I'm eligible to retire or retire and do something fun to make up the difference in the income um, but that's the goal is to get this uh, this old lady ready to ready to float what are our plans gonna be uh, she came off of Lake Ontario. If our plans are to just mess around on Lake Ontario, maybe make it as far, you know, we're in the Rochester area, make it as far as Toronto or up to the Thousand Islands, then I really don't need to do a heck of a lot to it. She's in good shape for that already. If I want to take it down the coast and explore the Caribbean Islands and even farther, then there are some upgrades that do need to be made. I know this probably has a few Elberg aficionados watching it. Um, this is a 1975, so one of the problems is in some of these is the masthead support beam right here. In this case, is a nice aluminum beam, so I don't have to worry about it. Some of the older ones had a wooden beam there that sagged, but I mean the doors, even the doors closed, because everything's still plumb. And then another issue, and I'll just grab one for an example here. Bring it out, talk. 
Another issue that Elberg aficionados will let you know about is the chain plates for the shrouds for the mast. The bolts supporting them are undersized. They are, I think, a quarter inch bolts um, and they will shear and there goes your mast. And that's what happened to, uh, I can't pronounce his name. I'll, I'll make a little blurb underneath of who it is. Uh, he, he did a circumnavigation uh, back in the 70s and he got dismasted I think in the Indian Ocean or something like that when his uh, one of his forward shrouds stripped and he lost the mast uh, so upgrading these at least at least putting thicker bolts in um, I may upgrade the plates themselves I don't know but those are those are really the two main two biggies that I can recall I, I, I looked around at the different sailboats and the Elberg 30 was on the short list and this one popped up uh, right here in the Rochester area talked to the owner great guy he's had it for decades he was glad to see it go to somebody that appreciates it and uh, I uh, I do appreciate it and we're, we're we're gonna have fun with it I gotta get it on the water though but short-term plan right now one of the issues with this boat is uh, I mean it had soft spots on the deck it's a 45 year old boat with a wood uh, yeah wood a balsa wood coring for the deck hulls Solid fiberglass, nice thick, overbuilt, 1970s. The, uh, the decking uh, has uh, a layer of fiberglass, a balsa wood core, and another layer of fiberglass. And over time, different areas, uh, stanchion bases, whatever, uh, water will get into that uh, balsa coring and rot it out and soften it, weaken it, get flexed. So I have, at, at this stage, and I'll, uh, future videos I'll show I took video during doing during that work, um, but uh, I have made it all the way from the bow. I'm now f uh, finishing up the uh, cockpit sole, and I just have the um, rear lazarette area to do. And that I've I have uh, replaced all the coring, all the not all the coring, all the coring that was bad. Um, Placed it, put new fiberglass down if I had to, uh, and uh, fared, first layer of fairing. The whole thing needs to be fared. Once, once I get the whole thing done once, go through it and fair the whole top, and I'll put down some uh, Kiwi Grip or something, some kind of anti-skid. Um, so that's what I've done so far. And the reason I had to I start at the top, and I got this top cover over it, is I found a uh, crack developed in the keel uh, I, I, I don't think it was there when I bought it. Uh, the current, the previous owner didn't, didn't remember it and I didn't remember it when I first got it here. So I think what happened was the first year it was sitting at my house, we had a freeze thaw over the winter and there was water in the keel and it, it split the keel open. And so I got a little crack. I'll try to, I'll pop a picture up here. It's got a little crack, um, that, um, I have left open and I have, I've covered it. I am, I am not allowing any more water to come in into the boat through the bad decking, which was making its way to the bilge. Um, there was a pump in the bilge, but there's always a little bit of water, and I think that water made its way down through the keel. It's a cast iron keel encapsulated in fiberglass. Um, so it made its way down to that, so it puddled up in the keel and froze. Water expands when it freezes, crack the, crack the hull. Uh, or crack the keel. Not as big as some people might be saying, oh my god, that's awful, your boat's going to sink. It's not really as big a deal as, as you might think. Um, they actually have plugs to put in the keel for a cold weather environment boat like this one. Take it out in the, in the fall, pull the plug to allow whatever water has accumulated in the keel to drain so it doesn't do the freeze thaw. So I mean, it's, it's that, it, it is a common uh, condition. I don't know common, but it is a known condition that's not going to, the boat's not going to sink. Uh, certainly, I, uh, I'm going to seal it up, but I've started up at the top, finishing off the, the deck so that water no longer leaks in. Then I'm going to come inside the boat and I'm going to take out everything down along the uh, bilge. There's a black water tank for the toilet right under my feet here. I'm pulling that out completely. I'm going to get rid of that head and I'm going to put in a composting head so I don't have to deal with the black water tank anymore. 
So I'm going to open up the keel all the way down, or open up the bilge all the way down. And you can see right here, right now, I do have I do have a bilge pump is in there. There's a battery. There's a bilge pump. Bilge is bone dry right now, and it has been for quite a while, ever since I got the cover on this boat. So with a dry keel or a dry bilge, and I left that crack open in the uh, keel, uh, that should dry out, and it's been open now for a year. That that crack. So anything that's in there should should have dried out by now, and I just got to keep water from getting in there. So I'm gonna pull everything out, including the engine. I'll discuss that again. It may go back in, but I'm going to move it so I can completely clean the bilge, sand it all down, put a fresh layer of fiberglass, seal it completely, repaint it so no, nothing's getting down, or at least very minimal, will be getting down into that encapsulated keel. And then um, at that point, I can go outside and I'll. Uh, grind out that crack, fill it with uh, thickened epoxy and fiberglass tape over it, and it'll be good as new. So that's, that's the approach I have at the moment. This year has been the deck. So long-term goals, uh, this interior, that's a whole nother, another question that uh, if we're just gonna mess around on Lake Ontario, I'm not gonna, I'll leave it the way it is. If we're gonna go around the world, I may, I may change it up quite a bit. Um, I'd like, the uh, the table that you can sit at instead of these settees, I'd, I'd like to have a table that'll drop down to a settee. So I mean, when we're off offshore and you need a you need a berth for uh, uh, you don't want to necessarily be in the V berth up here uh, because it's not real comfortable in rolling seas. So these are these are great for that. But um, I think I'm gonna convert at least one side to that. May take out the closet here so I have more space there to make a bigger galley so there's, there's things to do there's things that I'd, I'd like to do to make it a little more comfortable for long term if that's what we end up doing but that's I don't have to worry about that at the moment like I said I don't know about the layout but I'm gonna I'm gonna gut it of the uh, electrical I'm gonna run everything new for the electrical since I'll, I'll be I have it here it's at my house I can spend evenings and weekends on it when I feel like it and when I don't feel like it it can sit for a year and I'm not paying rent at a marina but I'd like to keep moving on it so complete upgrade the electrical put LED lighting everywhere um, I already talked about pulling the head and putting in a composting head and they don't have to worry about all the plumbing uh, the through halls or any of that shit for the plumbing the um, water there's a tank up in the front. Um, I'm going to put a link down, if I remember, Adam Voyagers. Um, James Baldwin has a um, fantastic channel. If you have this style boat, uh, Cape Dories, the Albergs, all the, the similar style boats, the older fiberglass, um, he, he restores these things uh, just absolutely beautifully. I mean, he's, he's, he's who I'm, I'm following. I'm following him. So you should as well, uh, but he he redoes the uh, water tanks, makes them a uh, fully encapsulated into the into the keel, and I think I may I may do that. Um, I'll run all new plumbing. All there is in here for water was the head, and I don't even recall. That's probably raw water, anyway. I don't think it used fresh water, so there's just a, a little sink um, right now. Uh, and uh, that's that's all it will have. Um, it's, it's just the sink. So, uh, and I'll have a foot pump. I don't even want to have pressurized water. It's all these systems. I want to make it as as simple as possible, as easily repaired as possible. Um, if we're or somewhere around the world and my my, uh, my my pump for my water supply goes, uh, I don't want to deal with it. Um, I'll have, like you know, a, a foot pump is is pretty reliable. I'll just have a spare if something happens. So lighting's going to be simple. LED. Um, I'm not planning on having uh, super heavy loads. A refrigerator. I haven't really thought too much about yet. I'm not sure where we're going to do with that. Again, if you're staying on 
I think I think probably what I'm going to do is just make it so it can be retrofitted with a, a freeze plate to make it a fridge. It's just going to be a cooler for now. I have a lot of video shot of what I've been doing on the deck. I'm going to make uh, videos of that, and I don't think it will take very long at all because I'm not I'm not progressing very fast at this. You'll catch up to real time at some point fairly soon. But uh, anyway. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I, my understanding with these YouTube channels is if you subscribe, that, that helps me a lot. If you give it a like, that helps a lot with the algorithms on YouTube somehow. Um, and uh, thanks. We'll see how this goes.